Hi everyone, I'm Matt Eels, b g Product Director, and today I want to share with you some of my top tips for getting the most out of your b g system. Part of your boat preparation should be to clean and check your paddle wheel or the boat speed sensor. It can quite easily get furred up with marine growth, which will affect the boat speed recorded. Once you're happy that it's clean, it's time to actually go out on the water and calibrate it. And you can achieve this via three methods. The first one is through a known reference. This is where you use a, another boat that you're happy that's got a calibrated boat speed. The second option is to use a GPS uh, and use the speed over ground as a reference, but you need to be careful that any wind or tide may affect your speed and therefore give you an inaccurate boat speed calibration. And the third and final option is where you do a speed run over a known distance and this gives you the most accurate and best results. All the calibration is all achieved via the, either the MFD, the H5000 graphic or the Triton display. Once you're happy that your boat speed is calibrated, the second thing to look at is the compass on the board. First thing to do is to make sure that you haven't got any magnetic metals stored near it, because this can greatly affect your compass heading. And then once you're out on the water, you need to complete a compass calibration process. This involves doing a 360 degree turn, and you can initiate this from one of the MFD's H5000 graphic or Triton display. So the reason we need a correctly calibrated boat speed and heading sensor on our system is because it's used to calculate apparent and true wind in our system. Secondly, it's also used to calculate tide set and rate, which is shown on the sail steer page and is also used in calculating the ley lines. And finally, for accurate steering in your pilot, the pilot CPU needs to know an accurate boat speed. You may also want to spend a little bit of time familiarising yourself with how to use speed over ground as a source of boat speed in case you need a secondary backup source. And one final piece of calibration is the barometric pressure sensor. So you may want to Google a local weather station to get a, get a reference point and then you can enter this into our system to calibrate your, your sensor. And this is useful because you can then use your barometric pressure and your true wind to verify and validate any weather forecasts that you have. So some of you may be using a weather routing program to help determine what that optimum route is to the destination. And for these to work accurately, you need a polar for the boat. And the polar is used to determine what the performance of the boat is at different wind speeds and different wind angles. And one source of this is Predict Wind, where they have a complete set of polars for the lagoon family. So things to check are to make sure that you've got that set in your routing preferences that you've got your lagoon model set and the other thing to do is you can also download those polars and import them into the BNG system and one thing you can do is connect your MFD to the internet where you can directly log into your predict wind account and then straight from the touch screen you can actually set up all your routing preferences and then download the optimum route straight to the MFD ready for your navigation on your MFD it's worth checking one of the settings for navigation is either set to rum line or great circle route. Or for long distances, great circle route is preferable because it's providing the shortest distance to your destination. As part of your safety preparations, it's worth checking your AIS transponder to make sure it's enabled to transmit, has good range, and there's no errors reported. To check it, I would use marine traffic, or you could even use the BNG companion app to make sure that your AIS target has been registered. And to check the range, marine traffic actually show you the distance from the receiver. So this is a way of just verifying how much transmission you have from your VHF aerial. On the MFD, it's worth checking to make sure you've disabled all filters for AIS so that you can see all targets and you haven't filtered out closest or dangerous only. And the other thing you might want to consider is setting up some alerts for your closest point of approach and also your time to closest point of approach. So you may want to spend some time with your crew familiarising yourself how to initiate a man overboard event on our system. And this can be achieved via the MFD, via the two dedicated buttons below the rotary knob, or there's an icon on the home page on the, on the touch screen. Alternatively, you can wire in a remote button to the H5000 CPU, and a single press of this button will initiate a man overboard event on our system. Another option for initiating a man overboard is when you receive an AIS SART message via the AIS system. And that could be either from your boat or another boat. And that man overboard will appear as an icon on your MFD screen. When you activate a man overboard event, the H5000 graphic, Triton or Nemesis display 
have a dedicated man overboard page which will be shown automatically. And this gives a GPS position of where that event was triggered, but also a clear steering instructions of how to recover that man overboard. As part of your onboard communications, you may want to take some time to familiarise yourself with how to make a DSC call to an AIS target direct from the touchscreen of the MFD. For any long distance sailing, reliability of your autopilot is paramount. And one of the first things you can do is check your rudder reference unit, which measures the rudder angle of the boat. And you need to check to make sure it's secure, unimpeded, and also calibrated. At all times, the autopilot needs to know the rudder angle of the boat. And secondly, you want to make sure that your drive unit is securely fixed to the rudder arm and that the drive unit is working and serviced. When you're sailing and the pilot's engaged in wind mode, downwind, you want to use true wind as your source of wind angle. And this gives a much more stable and accurate steering. If you're sailing upwind, then I would use apparent wind angle. But if you want, you can set it to auto, where the pilot will choose apparent or true depending on your point of sail. If you have an H5000 sail pilot installed, you may want to consider some of the advanced sail features, for example, the true wind speed response. And this feature will actually bear the boat away automatically when a gust or a squall hits, depowering the boat and keeping you under control. If you have the new Halo 20 Plus radar, you may want to consider updating the MFD and the radar to the latest software to take advantage of some of the new features, which includes the power safe. And what the power save feature allows you to do is set some parameters on the radar to, for it to go to sleep and then periodically wake up, do a number of scans and then go back to sleep again. For example, you could set it to sleep for 20 minutes, wake up, do 20 scans and then it'll go back to sleep again. And if the radar detects any dangerous objects during that period, then you'll be alerted on the MFD. And this is a great way of keeping situational awareness without running the radar 24 seven and therefore saving you power. To get the best performance out of your radar, I would suggest just using the standard auto modes. These are optimized to give you the best performance in the current conditions. The other thing to remember is you have a harbor mode and an offshore mode. Harbor mode makes sure that you can see every object in a crowded and congested area, whereas offshore mode will declutter the radar image, only showing you the true dangerous objects. The 20 plus radar also has weather mode. And what weather mode allows you to do when combined with velocity track is identify any squalls on the horizon, allowing you to be more prepared and ultimately safer. And if you have time, it's worth familiarizing yourself on the MFD with how to set up a guard zone or sector alarm for the radar too. And before you leave, I would recommend downloading the B&G app to either your mobile phone or your tablet device. And what this does is it allows you to access the latest CMAP charts so you can explore new anchorages away from the MFD itself. The other feature of the companion app is the screen mirroring, which allows you to mirror the screen of the MFD on your mobile device. So you could basically keep watch whilst off watch or whilst you're away from the helm. And finally, don't forget to start your trip log. This is a great way of reviewing your track, seeing what your maximum speed was, and you can even set up color-coded tracks so that you can see where your maximum speed and the maximum wind speed was on your trip. And I think the only other tip I can give you is just to have a great trip, have fun, and stay safe. <laughs>